like to take this opportunity to say thank you to our search committee. The chair of our committee was our senior women's administrator, senior associate athletic director, and the sports supervisor, uh, Julie Levesque. And Julie's standing over here, and she led our search. Did a great job. Thank you, Julie, for your help there. Standing beside her, who was just, just at the, uh, the podium, was Jeff Darby, who is our senior associate athletic director. Jeff has been here a long time, over 20 years, and worked with all of our great basketball coaches over the years. So we felt like his knowledge and experience and understanding of what it takes to win here would really be valuable on our search committee. So Jeff, thank you for being on that and serving and lending your expertise. Greatly appreciated. And Dr. Wilson was also on our search committee and participated, did a great job, and I'll talk about her in just a second. You know, many people have asked me, you know, what were we looking for? In, in all honesty, one of the funniest comments I've had and heard from people is people say, you know what, you just need a ball coach who can coach and recruit. Oh, that's a novel idea. I've never thought of that. You know, you, don't, you, you can't believe how many times I've heard that. Uh, but that's really the essence of coaching, right? You've got to be able to recruit players and you've got to be able to coach them up. All right? And at the end of the day, it's not about stats. The only stat that, that, that matters is if you win or you lose. So uh, th let me go down through the list of things that we were looking for, a person of high integrity. We wanted somebody who understood Texas and especially would understand and embrace El Paso in the UTEP community. We wanted somebody, obviously, who can recruit and could demonstrate that they've done that by the type of players that they've had in their program. And that doesn't always mean you're recruiting five-star kids. It means you're re recruiting the right young person to come to your institution at that time who fills the need that you need to compete for and win championships. The next thing is a person who can coach at a very high level and, and, and has shown and demonstrated success. Uh, obviously, we've talked to a lot of people. Let me just say, in, in, uh, out, of, out of respect to our media members that are here, don't believe everything that you read in the newspaper or hear on TV or see on social media sites. Uh, if it doesn't come from Jim Center's mouth or a press release from UTEP Athletics, uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a story until it's been validated. You'd be amazed how many people have said, you're hiring so-and-so? You're doing what? Uh, and the truth is, this process went, went and went and went, and as fast as it went, you know, which was very, very quickly, seven days, um, it's, it's been quite remarkable. Uh, we were still coming up against the 9 and 10 o'clock hour last night, you know, crossing T's and dotting I's and making sure we did our due diligence. So there's a lot of work that goes into this, and I recognize members of the media have a job to do, but it sure is fun to talk about all the uh, ifs and buts, isn't it? Uh, and, and those kinds of things. And trust me, media members, you, you, you guys take a backseat to college basketball coaches because those guys really know how to tell a good story, right? Uh, and, and spread rumors du jour. So it's quite, quite amazing. But we found uh, who we believe is just this unbelievable person. And every single time I talk to people, our, our, our committee talk to people, Joe Golding's name continued to come up over and over and over and over. Uh, and, and it's not just because uh, he beat the University of Texas at Austin uh, in, in the NCAA basketball tournament. And, and in deference to all of our UT fans and supporters and everything, uh, that was just a remarkable thing. That was kind of like icing on the cake. But the cake uh, of Joe Golding is really the remarkable job that he's done at uh, Abilene Christian University. So, you know, kudos to them and the great accomplishments that they had this year. And really over the last, uh, I'd say probably co coaches, coaches' best records have been the last three or four years. But it's all the stuff that he did before that, right? But, and to use a construction analogy, it's not, you know, people in homeowners never get excited, get excited about, you know, when you're, digging, when you're digging the ditch for footings. And no one gets excited when you're plumbing in uh, or roughing in the the, the plumbing, right? I, you know, I see you know, Edgar sitting there. He can appreciate this analogy. Um, but no one gets excited about that. That's the stuff that Coach was doing when they were D2 and when they were in that probationary period when you can't play for anything and you're trying to recruit players to a, to a university where they can't play in the postseason, right? That's building the foundation of success. And then along comes the walls and the roof, and you put the finishes on, and people go, oh, my God, I love my house. Well, and that's what, that's what the Wildcat fans have been saying for the last two or three years about our new, our new uh, basketball coach who was their coach, right? So kudos to Abilene Christian, their staff, and their players and their team who made it possible for us to go out and find this amazing gentleman. So we're delighted to, uh, to welcome their family and coach to our family. And, and before I, I turn it over, I want to uh, just say this. Dr. Wilson participated in our face-to-face -face interviews, took two days to do that. I am so appreciative of her uh, being involved with this. Uh, it is so important 
important, and it sends a message to every single candidate we interviewed that our president uh, dedicated two days to face-to-face -face interviews, and and they were long interviews. I mean, this wasn't a you know a thirty a thirty minute deal. These were two hour interviews, and uh, and we asked about every question you could possibly think of. So. Uh, I'm very, very grateful for her and her vision and her participation and her wisdom and knowledge as we selected and narrowed down this group of uh, this group of candidates to our finalist, Angel Golding. So we have struck gold there. But at this time, I'd like to bring Dr. Wilson up just to share a few thoughts uh, with uh, with you all, and then uh, we'll introduce Coach Golding. Thank you. Jim, thank you, and thank you for your leadership. If there's one thing that we've established, it's that I know very little about basketball. But I do know a little bit about being a former student athlete. And there were a couple of things that I thought that really mattered when we were looking for a new coach. We wanted someone who was a man of character, a man of integrity, who could run a good program. But I knew that as a student athlete, I wanted to win. But I also wanted somebody who cared about me, cared about trying to make me a better version of myself, developing my skills and abilities to be better. And I think we found that coach, who's a man of character, who's shown himself with a stick to to build a good program at Abilene Christian, and who fits in with El Paso and UTEP's culture of care, because that's who we are. I look forward to being here for the games and cheering on the minors. Kaysen and Chase, we're really happy to have you here in El Paso. And uh, I know that over the years, I've forced my kids to uh, sometimes move when they may not have been completely ready to move. And I know sometimes that's hard. And even if you want to do it, there are hard parts to it. But I want to let you know that we're really glad that you and your dad and your mom are coming here to be part of El Paso. And Amanda, welcome to the family. We are really glad that you're here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the 20th head coach of the UTEP Miners, Joe Golding. We want to do this. So, yep. Dr. Wilson, walk the stand on one side, and uh, we'll, we'll put Joe, let's put Joe in the middle. You get on all the right. other side there. It's the only time I'm and, in the. Uh, <laughs> all right. You know, you yeah, oh, yeah. We're, we're being instructed to come out front here. There you go, right there. It's been a long, um, actually it's been a long three weeks uh, for our family. Uh, it's been an incredible journey uh, from Abilene Christian uh, here to El Paso, Texas over the last three or four weeks, but we couldn't be more excited. Uh, before I start this press conference, and you guys probably all want to know how we're going to win basketball games um, here at UTEP, let me say a few things real quick if you don't mind. First, uh, with research in this university um, over the last week, um, I wanted to mention two things quickly before we started. One is on Alvin Jones Sr. I know he was very dear to a lot of minor fans. Uh, I know his sons uh, played here at, at UTEP, and I know with his passing uh, just recently and how important they are to this community. So definitely want to uh, acknowledge him and his family. And then I wanted to acknowledge Daryl Edwards. Uh, I did not know Daryl. Um, obviously, I know Daryl played here uh, for the minors and uh, was a big part of the 2019 and 2020 season. Uh, I would like to say publicly while cameras are here that he's got a GoFundMe page uh, set up, and so I know minors are all about family. So if you have the opportunity uh, to, to uh, give to that, I think Daryl and his family would be very appreciative. So just wanted to mention those two things uh, real quick. First of all, I want to thank Dr. Wilson uh, and Mr. Center uh, for the search. 
I also want to thank Jeff and Julie. Um, it's been an uh, exhausting uh, week. It's been a quick week, but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, when he says it's a two-hour interview, it definitely was. Uh, these guys grilled me pretty good, um, but rightfully so. They care about this university. Uh, they care about this city. And uh, I took a lot of ownership in that, um, knowing that the president was sitting there across the table and the AD was grilling me the way he did, uh, t told me how much he cared uh, about this about this place. So I want to appreciate everybody on the search committee. And then, Mr. Anderson, I know you're in here somewhere, but appreciate the uh, flight over and, and the opportunity for Chase and Kaysen to fly the plane. Uh, we learned an important uh, lesson today about ducks, do we not? We had our duck hat on all day, too, but uh, they, we put on some minor hats uh, for, for the press conference. I want to thank my family. Uh, obviously, my mother-in-law's here, Marsha, um, uh, and then Amanda, my, my wife. She's been a part of this journey from the get-go. This thing started a long time ago. Uh, we've always kind of been under the radar. We did it our way. Uh, we, we didn't spend time with search committees or hiring agents or doing uh, things that other people did. Uh, we were kind of on our path of our own. Uh, we invested in each other. It hasn't been easy. We've lived in nine houses, I think, uh, along this journey uh, together. But we've raised two beautiful kids, and she's been the rock of my family. And uh, so happy that she's here with me, and she's, she's happy to be in El Paso. But I love you, and thanks for everything. Kaysen, our oldest, uh, is in the eighth grade. Uh, Kaysen's a basketball player. He's fired up, so he's on the recruiting uh, market right now for any high schools in El Paso uh, out there. Uh, he's a pretty good player. Uh, doesn't have a left hand. Uh, can, uh, when he crosses half court, he's got the green light, he thinks, so he needs a little coaching on that shot selection. Uh, but he took his first charge this year uh, at the junior high level and went undefeated. So um, love you, Kaysen, and excited for you in this journey uh, as part of us. And then we got Chase, the little one you guys all know about the last chapter. Child, man, yeah, for everybody that has children. Uh, Chase, is, Chase is the fun one. Chase has got a ton of energy, like his old man. Uh, he's our football, baseball player. Um, he also plays basketball, does a little rebounding, does dirty things, kind of a glue guy. Uh, but as he told our players uh, this afternoon, man, he's always got the green light, you know? So uh, we'll see, man. But Chase, I'm happy you're here, man, and uh, uh, appreciate your support in this. All right, so UTEP, here we go, man. Why is Joe Golding sitting here? Uh, why did Joe Golding leave Abilene Christian and everything we've built? It hasn't been an easy decision. But let me tell you why Joe Golding's here, man. Look up at the rafters. Uh, this place has history. This place has tradition. This place knows how to win, uh, and it's ready to win. And I know there's a lot of people out there, like Jim said in the media, saying Joe Golding's a program builder, and maybe I'm labeled that way. Uh, but I believe every institution and every program can be built a different way. I did not come to UTEP to spend 10 years in building this program. This program has already been built. My job here at UTEP uh, is to win in year one. And I'm going to go to work as soon as this press conference is over. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is these guys sitting right here that we just met uh, with the team, they're the most important thing right now is our players. Uh, we're going to get them settled out, and if they want to stay stay here and be minors, uh, then we're going to make it the best opportunity for them. And if they don't want to be minors, we're going to help them uh, get to the opportunity they want. From that point moving forward, we are going to recruit. Uh, this is a different model than Abilene Christian. We are going to use every resource we have out there to recruit the best players to El Paso, Texas, and, and uh, to this university. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to recruit guys that fit this university. We're going to recruit guys that fit this city um, and uh, guys that want to win and guys that want to continue to hang banners. After we recruit players, we're going to build a staff. I told Jim and Dr. Wilson uh, we're going to get the best staff in Conference USA. I have complete confidence in, the, in that. Uh, we're going to build an incredible staff. Uh, I'm working on that behind the scenes right now uh, with great support from these two behind me because uh, Joe Golding is nothing without great players and a great staff, and I think we could all agree uh, to that. The thing that I think is the most important as I researched this job uh, and looked at this job is we got to get involvement back from the city of El Paso and from UTEP University. Um, I, I, that's the biggest thing. Uh, th th this town is, is a basketball town. Uh, it's an athletic town. Uh, this place obviously has been packed many times before. And I can promise you right now, uh, Joe Golding and his family um, is going to be involved in this community. Uh, just like our players are going to be involved in this community. You're going to see us everywhere. Uh, I, I truly believe, and I've seen it done, we got the blueprint at Abilene. Uh, when you invest in a community and uh, you, you let a community come inside of it and, and you let a community get involved and you let students get Get involved, uh, these seats are going to get filled. And there's no secret to why these banners are hung. Uh, this place used to be packed, and nobody would come to El Paso, Texas to play in the Don. Uh, they wanted no part of this place. Uh, and we have to continue to work hard each and every day to get butts back in these seats, man, and get this place rocking where nobody wants to come. So um, I think that's a big part and a big uh, 
selling point to me, to Jim and Dr. Wilson. That's not easy. That doesn't happen overnight. Just like I told our players, uh, we have to continue each day to build relationships, and we will continue to do that uh, until this sucker's filled. I think um, researching this job, uh, growing up in Midland, Texas, I'm a West Texas boy. Uh, I, 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 in this process, was was just kind of thrilled a little bit when I kept seeing 915 area code numbers popping back up. I felt like I was back at home, um, and uh, I, I was born and raised uh, in West Texas. It's home to me. I think this fit is really good. I grew up in elementary and junior high when Coach Haskins was still coaching the minors. I understand everything he was about. I've watched Glory Road about 100 times. Um, I got my picture taken today in front of the national championship trophy, and I got goosebumps and almost cried. Uh, the man's a legend. Uh, he built this place. Uh, I know his wife Mary is still here in town and son Steve, and I look forward to going there and seeing them as soon as possible uh, because they built this place. But then you look at the history after Coach Haskins. Uh, you look at Billy Gillespie and what he was able to do here, who's become a good friend of mine over the last five or six years. You look at after Billy, Doc Sadler. Uh, who's just an incredible man of character, uh, an incredible man, a credible coach, uh, a guy that loves El Paso. I promise you, I talked to him this morning. He loves this city. He loves this school. Uh, and he loves this basketball program and takes a lot of pride in it and wants it back to where it belongs. After Coach Sadler, you had Coach Barbie, who did a tremendous job of continuing the excellence uh, that those two other guys before him did. Uh, Coach Barbie played a, uh, an exciting brand of basketball that continued to win uh, at a high level. And then after him, the godfather himself, Tim Floyd, uh, or he'll call himself the godfather. Uh, I think we all agree Coach Haskins probably is, but Coach Floyd might disagree. But I've, let me tell you guys a funny story. Coach Floyd called me after the University of Texas game. I'd never met Coach Floyd, never talked to Coach Floyd. Uh, he called me to talk about our, 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 our win over the University of Texas. And... As you, can, as you can understand, when you beat Texas in the first round of the NCAA tournament, your phone goes crazy. I had a lot of phone calls, a lot of text messages, but when I saw Coach Floyd there, I was like, man, this is Coach Floyd. i got to call Coach Floyd because Coach Floyd meant something to me growing up in West Texas and everything he had done. And uh, I called Coach Floyd back, and Coach Floyd talked to me about how impressed he was of our team and, and how well we played defensively and how hard our guys played and how well we played together and our bench energy and our culture and how that, that's how his teams, he always wanted his teams to play that way. And I thanked him, and we talked about getting up to visit sometime this summer and catching up and, and just him swapping stories about his journey and uh, me continuing to be a young coach and learn. Come to fruition, man, two weeks later, this job opens up, and Coach Floyd uh, calls me back and says, hey, do you have any interest in UTEP? And I said, Coach Floyd, I I'll get in my car right now and drive to El Paso, you know? Uh, I would love to be the, coach uh, the head coach at, at UTEP. So um, it's so funny how it works. You know, you answer uh, a phone call. You make a phone call back, and then two weeks later, Coach Floyd is helping me become uh, the head coach at UTEP. So I uh, just wanted to mention that. Last person is Coach Terry. Coach Terry is a good friend of mine. Uh, I think Coach Terry is a first-class guy. I think Coach Terry left this program in a good place. This program is not broken. Um, he, he's uh, been a tremendous asset to me over the last two or three days here um, as uh, this thing has gotten serious. Um, and I just want to appreciate him. I talked to him this morning. Uh, he loves El Paso. He loves you guys. Uh, he took an opportunity um, that he decided was best for him and his family, and we support him in that. But it opened the door to me and my family being here, and uh, we couldn't be happier. I told him thank you today. The only thing I didn't like he left me was the University of Kansas on the schedule. Uh, I told him thanks for that and I'll send him a picture when we're in Allen Fieldhouse you know in a year so um, that's it that's Joe Golding man um, th that's what I'm about uh, I'm about relationships uh, real relationships uh, I, I told my guys I'm not going to use the word culture here because I don't want to be on all those videos all across the country but uh, culture is easy for coaches to say but it's very very hard to do you, uh, culture is building relationships every single day uh, every hour of the day with your players and um, getting your players to trust you and getting your players to perform I, I think if you can coach guys hard you can still coach guys hard today we're going to coach our team really 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 hard but we're going to love our guys a lot harder off the floor. Um, that's something I believe in. It's something that I've seen work, uh, and I'm excited to do that blueprint here. The last thing I will say, uh, besides being really cool to drive in on Glory Road uh, and get to the dawn today and this morning, it's been a long, exhausting day, but we couldn't be happier. I will say this. The first thing I'm doing is worried about my players uh, tonight and in the morning uh, and taking care of these guys. But I will be at Lucy's Cafe, I can promise you, in the morning at 8.30 to pay tribute to the legend, uh, Coach Haskins. Uh, I will be there, man, at 8.30 in the morning. And anybody in El Paso, Texas, that wants to come see Joe Goldie, come on, man. Uh, just bring enough money to buy season tickets. Uh, and I'll 
I'll buy your breakfast, man. But I'm going to Lucy's Cafe, and I hope you see you there. Thanks, guys. Okay, we do have a phone right here. We've got some people on the line. I think they may have some questions for Coach Golding before we go to the, the media who are here in, in attendance. But does anybody on the phone have a question for Coach? I'm doing great. You? Uh, first and foremost, congrats on your new gig. We're wishing you the best success to the Miners going forward from Abilene to El Paso. And as you're being introduced there as the uh, Miners' new head coach, your old uh, associate coach, Brett Tanner, has just been introduced to replace you as the new head coach at ACU. Uh, just curious, what do you think he can bring to the table as a head coach to the Wildcats? And what do you think about the prospects? of UCAP potentially going head-to-head -head against the Wildcats and the Wildcats and Tanner in the future. Yeah, first of all, I think uh, on that, I just uh, I take a lot of pride in Coach Tanner being named the head coach. I think we did this thing the right way, uh, and when you do things the right way, people get rewarded for it. So it's a it's a great day for my family and I. Uh, I want to say this again: I couldn't be more excited to be a UTEP minor and be the head basketball coach here. Um, ACU will always be dear to my heart. Uh, it's a place that gave me a chance, it gave me an opportunity, uh, and I will always be thankful for everything that Abilene Christian did. Uh, but today, professionally, uh, it may be the most uh, uh, excited, I guess I've been uh, with Brett Tanner uh, being named the head coach. He's family to us. He's been with us from the get-go building that program. He's a great ball coach, uh, but he doesn't want any of the UTEP minors. I can promise you that, man. Do we have any more Thank questions you. on the phone? Okay. So I, I know Vinny's got the microphone and he'll pass it around. And again, please, if you have a question, Speak in the microphone and identify yourself, your uh, your name, and media out so Coach gets to know everybody. Hey, Coach, Brett Blomquist, El Paso Times. You say every building job is a little different. You're not going to do this exactly like you did Adeline Christian. What's your assessment of where things are right now and what UTEP needs to do, what you've got to do to take the next step? Yeah, I think we're still figuring that out. Um, I, I think player meetings started today. I think everybody knows the world we're living in in the transfer portal. Um, it, it, college basketball changed two or three weeks ago. Uh, right now, uh, it could help us, um, you know, continue to recruit and fill this roster. And a year from now, it might hurt us, you know, when guys choose to leave. So I think you could be on both sides of that. But that would uh, probably be unfair for me to uh, answer until I get in here and, and get in the weeds and figure out uh, what we need uh, and, and what we uh, need to recruit and what we need to do off the floor uh, to get this community involved. But um, I I'm excited about everything, everything that uh, Jim said to me, everything that Dr. Wilson said to me, I have seen here since I've landed. Um, everything has been the truth. They haven't uh, hid from anything. Um, and uh, they believe, like I do, that this is one of the best uh, college basketball programs in the country, and we plan to put uh, UTEP right back on the map. Morning, Coach, or afternoon. Uh, Mike Cuvio from The Prospector. Um, you had a certain kind of system that you ran at Abilene Christian, and much of it is credited to the coach that just took the job. Do you plan on basically running a similar system here, or is there something that may be unique to UTEP compared to Abilene Christian? Yeah, uh, we want to win, um, and we'll run whatever system wins basketball games. It's as simple as that, you know. Uh, we found a, a niche to us at Abilene Christian that worked for us. Uh, we recruited to that model, and we played to that model. But UTEP's a different deal. So we're going to recruit the best players, and then we'll figure out what they do best on both sides of the floor uh, because at the end of the day, the, the main objective is to win and win the right way. So um, we're, not, we're not in bed with anything as far as this is the way we're going to do offense or this is the way we're going to do defense. I will say this, the way we play defense is something we've been doing a long time. Uh, I don't think that will change, and I think that fits this community and it fits this school uh, and you, you've got to defend to win games you know it's kind of like football coach coach Dane Dimmel's around here somewhere but uh, appreciate coach coming man can't wait for Saturdays in the beautiful Sun Bowl by the way I'm a big football fan man my brother-in-law is the head football coach at SMU and worked with with, with Dana um, and so I'm excited to get out there just like I am at every sport uh, I've met Kevin Baker he's somewhere in here too I think an old D2 guy man so uh, I'm glad to share an office with him but um, Again, to your question, man, I just want to win, and I think our players want to win. And so we're going to find out what works at UTEP, what works with our roster, and we're going to go win, win games. And that is something that the uh, Miners faithful certainly wants uh, right now are more wins from this UTEP Miners basketball UTEP team. You've been watching live Joe Golding, the new head basketball coach of the UTEP men's basketball team, being introduced this afternoon after it was announced late last night officially by the university that he's been hired as the 20th 
head basketball coach for the men's basketball program. Golding coming from Abilene Christian, where he was the head coach for the previous 10 years, bringing that program from Division II to Division I, and over the last three years in particular, seeing tremendous success with Abilene Christian, 71-23 and 23 in the last three years, including a couple of NCAA tournament appearances. Of course, what's top of mind to everyone is number 14, Abilene Christian, upsetting number three seed Texas in the NCAA tournament just a couple of weeks ago, which really precipitated everything that we have seen all the way up to the point today with Joe Golding being introduced. A nice moment there from the UTEP president, Dr. Heather Wilson, before introducing Joe Golding, also acknowledging his two children, Kaysen and Chase, as well as his wife, Amanda, welcoming them to El Paso. It is obviously a big move for a family to make to uproot your kids when they're eighth grade and younger, to have to change school systems and come to El Paso. So a nice moment there from UTEP president, Dr. Heather Wilson, and from Joe Golding, who obviously did his research, acknowledging Alvin Jones Sr. before he got into the basketball talk, who recently passed, the father of, uh, of Aaron Jones, of course, and Daryl Edwards, a former UTEP basketball player, just uh, suffered a serious spinal injury in a car crash uh, within the last few nights, acknowledging the, uh, the GoFundMe page there and asking people to donate if they can. But a lot to unpack there from Joe Golding, who expects to win immediately. A few of the players I noticed in the crowd, Jamal Biennemi, starting point guard, Christian Sholand, Emmanuel White. He's going to have player meetings now, eventually build his staff, and we'll see what happens in the coming weeks, months, and years with Joe Golding. We'll have complete coverage coming up on ABC 7, 4, 5, and 6. We'll see you then.